Hi, Dr. Dave here with Demetrius Gelatis of the Minnesota Pool Boot Camp. I'm a big fan of Dr. Dave, and I've been excited to spend some time filming and training together. We've worked on several videos of fun and useful stuff to share with you guys. We hope you enjoy and take something out of it. This video covers what it means to have good timing in pool. Different people mean different things by good timing, but the most common interpretation concerns the stroke. A stroke with good timing has a slow backswing, a non-rushed transition between the back and forward swings, smooth acceleration forward, and no slowing before cue ball contact. Let's look at some example strokes with good timing. Notice how Demetrius pulls the cue back slowly, takes his time with the transition to the forward swing, and accelerates smoothly with no slowing into the cue ball. Demetrius always uses his full stroke and starts the forward swing very slowly to help prevent a rush transition and to make sure he doesn't try to build too much speed too early. When he uses more speed, he just accelerates at a faster rate into the ball. I instead control my speed by pulling the cue back shorter distances for slower speed shots. Again, notice the good timing with the slow backswing, non-rush transition to the forward swing, and smooth acceleration forward. Here's a fast speed stroke where I pull the cue back farther but use a similar acceleration over a larger distance to get the desired cue speed. This is generally a better approach for accurate and consistent speed control. There are some fun phrases that can help you remember the timing of a good stroke. Mark Wilson likes to say, ladies and gentlemen. My co-billiard university instructor Sam Dieppe likes to say, peanut butter and jelly. I prefer, back slow and accelerate. I know my phrase isn't as fun, but it contains the important instructions, which I like. Here's a graph that compares a good, smoothly accelerating stroke to several common, bad timing strokes. The graph shows how cue speed changes with time from the beginning of the forward swing to tip contact with the cue ball. A stroke with good timing starts forward slowly and smoothly accelerates to maximum speed at the cue ball. People who rush the backswing transition or who try to create speed too quickly have a rushed or impulsive stroke. People who generate speed early but then slow down into the cue ball have a decelerating stroke. People who generate speed early and try to keep the speed constant over a long distance into the cue ball have a constant speed stroke. Again, the green curve represents good timing. Demetrius likes to push the cue ball with the shaft to demonstrate the differences among the various stroke types. This is the analogy for a smoothly accelerating stroke. The shaft gradually pushes the cue ball forward without any big changes in force. Here's the analogy for a rushed stroke where the player tries to generate the speed too quickly. And here's a more extreme version. Here are some rushed stroke examples. Here, the backswing is nice and slow, but the forward swing is rushed. Here, everything is rushed. Here's the analogy for a decelerating stroke, where the player slows the cue down before reaching the cue ball. Here's an example of a slow decelerating stroke. Stroke deceleration makes it very difficult to control your speed accurately and consistently. Here's another example at a little faster speed. Other types of deceleration are when players peck or jab at the cue ball or even jerk the cue back immediately after the hit. They are not finishing the stroke properly, which will again result in poor and inconsistent speed control. Here's the analogy for a constant speed stroke, where the player tries to establish the desired speed early. Here's an example of what the stroke looks like. 
Some people can be effective with this approach, but most people will have better and more consistent speed control with a smoothly accelerating stroke where they vary the stroke length with shot speed. Now let's look at other technique flaws that can also be considered bad timing. The first concerns elbow drop. I cover this topic in my 10 Secrets of a Good Stroke video. Here's a pertinent excerpt. If you want to be accurate with tip contact point on the cue ball, you should keep the elbow still during the stroke into the cue ball. If you drop your elbow, you won't hit the cue ball at the height you expect. It is actually okay to drop the elbow if you can drop it straight and do so mostly after the hit. One problem with elbow drop for some people is that other bad things often come with it, like wrist turn and chicken wing sideways motion. The recommended type of stroke is called a pendulum stroke, where the shoulder and elbow remain still. Another form of bad timing deals with the eyes and head. With a good eye pattern, you lock your eyes on the object ball before the final stroke, so you have still laser focus during the shot. The final pause at the cue ball gives you a chance to lock and steady the eyes before the stroke. Here's an example of a bad eye pattern, where the eyes move quickly between the cue ball and object ball while the cue is moving back and forth, and there is no careful lock on the target before the final stroke. A related type of bad timing is getting up too early on the shot. Another is moving the head or eyes too soon to watch the shot. Instead, if you keep your head, body, and eyes still during and after the shot, you will have better and more consistent results. You can also have bad timing with your pre-shot routine. As already mentioned, pausing at the cue ball is important to give your eyes time to settle and lock onto the target before the final stroke. Not pausing at the cue ball also tends to cause the backswing to be rushed, which can throw off timing for the entire stroke. The pause at the cue ball not only gives your eyes time to focus, it also encourages you to go back slowly and smoothly to begin good stroke timing. Generally, it is best to keep the cue still while you check the aim and tip position carefully and then use warm-up strokes to get loose and to judge the stroke length you plan to use while also making sure the cue stays straight during motion. And then pause at the cue ball again to lock and settle the eyes. And then use good stroke timing. As mentioned before, another source of bad stroke timing is rushing the backswing and the transition between the back and forward swings. For people who rush the transition, it can help to add a deliberate pause at the end of the backswing. For people who rush the backswing, it can also help to add the pause at the cue ball. Another common area of bad timing is with the brake shot. I won't cover detailed brake technique advice here, but if you want to learn more and improve your brake, see the link in the video description. Here are some examples of good power brake timing from my How to Brake video with smooth acceleration forward and coordinated body weight shift. Shane Van Boning is among the best breakers in the world. Notice his slow backswing, his pause at the end of the backswing, and his smooth and relaxed acceleration with well-timed body lift and shift forward. For more information, see my SVB brake analysis video. Some pros use more power on the brake with much more body theatrics. But these techniques can be more difficult to control with consistency. All over the place. Yeah. Here are some examples of bad timing on the brake. Dropping the elbow too soon or not lifting the body early enough causes the tip to hit the cue ball too high. Here's another example. Here's an example of bad timing with the body weight shift. 
Not moving forward with good timing will take a lot of power off the brake. Again, use a slow backswing. Don't rush the back to forward swing transition. Smoothly accelerate forward while keeping the grip and wrist relaxed. And use well-timed body motion if you can control it. If you want to learn more about any topic in this video, see the links in the video description below. Good luck with your timing and your game from Dr. Dave. Thank you.